So let us talk a little bit about initialization. As we discussed before, it's really important to have the right kind of initialization. And we saw that in some cases we can derive what the right initialization is. But keep in mind, with every different transfer function, there should be a different way of initializing, all aimed that we remain, remain in the right range as we start building networks that are deeper and deeper. Otherwise, we can very easily have vanishing or exploding gradients. So let's talk about ReLU, because that's just a nice example. In this case, mind you that we have f of x is ax for x is smaller than 0, and is x for x is greater or equal than 0. The expectation of the output here will generally be 0, but the variance changes. And, uh, and uh, assuming that the probability that p is x is smaller than 0 is 0.5, it just means that it could, that, that instead of seeing a positive activity, activation, we could just as well see the negative activation. In that case, we can calculate the variance of uh, the function applied to the output of the layer, uh, which is the expected value of the squared of the function. Now keep in mind that the mean is zero here. Uh, and um, in that case, we have that this is the variance of the positive activity plus a squared times the variance of the negative ones divided by two. And now what we can do is we can basically pull out the 1 plus a squared over 2. So in that case, we have that that variance is 1 plus a squared over 2 times n in times sigma squared times gamma squared. Sigma squared is the variance of the presynaptic. Gamma squared is the variance of the weights. And with that, we can then calculate how the how the data should be not uh, how the system should be initialized so that it is in the right range. Now, check the Xavier initialization with Leaky Relu, and we'll see.